we had moved into a nice home, and across the street there was a lady who lived there. And one night, in the middle of the night, I heard a stream coming from the house. The stream was so blood curdling that we could hear it in our bedroom, and our bedroom walls were pretty tight. But I heard this woman cry, you're killing me. Stop beating me. You're killing me. I sat up on the bed, turned around and looked at Evelyn, and we got a look that we give each other. And it's a look of warfare. It's also a look of risk. Because I knew that when I left out of that room to go over to that house, I could be killed. And when I got to the door, I'm praying all the way there. God, Lord, cover me with your spirit. Lord, protect me. Because I don't know how far this guy would go. I knocked on the door. And all of a sudden, as the cussing and the fighting and the anger was coming through that door, this gentleman opened the door, eyes bloodshot, veins in his neck tight. And I said, look at me. And he was breathing heavily. <sighs> I said, look at me. I said, sir, look at me. I said, sir, I'm a preacher. I said, you're a killer if you keep beating her like this. He said, but you just don't know. In his anger, he kept saying, you just don't know how she made me. You don't know how she, she triggered me off. You don't know how she took. I said, look at me. I said, look at me. I said, man, I respect you. I'm not stepping in your territory. I said, but listen to me. I said, take a ride with me just to calm down. I said, if, I said you'll kill her. I said, I can hear you beating her all the way over my house, man. I said, I'm, and now on the inside, I'm binding and I'm loosing. I was skilled in demons, but I was in a faithful, a fearful zone then because I had bound spirits where it took five men to hold them down and seen angels strap them to the floor. I had seen demons coming out of folk that it took strong people to hold them. And by one word out of my mouth, I see the power of God break them. But this wasn't a demon. This was a man who was in full-blown manifestation, who was beating the woman that he believed was his. And he could have looked at me as just a man stepping up on him. Now, I come from the street. I haven't been saved all my life. I knew enough that when you go into that zone with a man, you better have Jesus because you done violated two things. Number one, you done stepped up on his manhood. Number two, you done trying to tell him how he run his house with his woman. I knew these things. Now, I know some of you reading this book, some of you listening at this YouTube will probably piously say in your religious word, well, you got the power and God's with you. But I want you to take a few minutes to have a reality check. There are times in your life where you face things that you were saying, Jesus, be with me. Because if you're not, I'm a dead man. He comes out the door. He gets in the car with me. And we ride. And I take him to his house. And as we're riding, I started telling the man. I said, I'm so glad that you came to me. I said, man, I wasn't disrespecting you. I said, I'm a preacher. I said, let me tell you something, man. I care about y'all. Now, I, I didn't care whether they had the Holy Ghost. It wasn't my business what they were doing in that room. It wasn't my time, man of God, to go going, is y'all married? Well, it ain't my business. You, they, you, you all were both going to hell anyway. Do y'all hear me? He was a man, and that was a woman, and that was a human being. And the only thing I could see was somebody had to say something. Unless a woman gets killed, and a man goes to jail, and the devil gets to glory. Let's give God a great big hand praise. The lady is still alive today. The two of them broke up. But I have never forgotten that. 
And as I talk about this message on domestic violence, because that's exactly what it was. It was domestic violence. Now, ladies, I put this up front because when you're explaining something like this, a lot of the examples will be man to woman. We know that anybody can be a domestic violent person. Anywhere from a woman who takes her mouth and just goes at a man until she irritates him and he gets acting crazy. Or a woman who physically beats him up. Domestic violence is a two-way street. But we're going to break this message down and expose the true enemy behind it. Satan hates the family. Ladies, I got something to tell you. He hates you special because you, Eve, is the only ones that can bring the prophetic, the apostolic, the pastor, the evangelist, and the teachers in the earth. Your body is so sacred that God in his divine power transformed out of the heavens human beings that would one day command devils, command territories, rot righteousness, and do exploits. So he hates you. Are you hearing me? When I started studying uh, and looking biblically at domestic violence, the very first person that I had to look up, and his name was Nabal. The name was Nabal. And that's in 1 Samuel 25, 17. 1 Samuel 25, 17. And I start here, and it says, 1 Samuel 25, 17, Now therefore know and consider what thou would do. For evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Now let me school y'all on something. Minister Jarius and Thurman and all of them uh, alluded to this. They broke it down. The man had a spirit called Belial. Now when the Bible says a person that has one name, is operating under a nature by another name, it is describing a demonic manifestation. The word Belial means worthlessness, destroyer. This, the stronghold that was in Nabal, Nabal, was so powerful, listen at this, that they said over him, the spirit, and this is what the spirit of Belial does. They said he's such a worthless man that nobody can tell him anything. The spirit of domestic violence and control that operated over Nabal was so strong that you couldn't tell him anything. Listen, where you find a man or, and even a woman that nobody can tell them anything. They're operating under a spirit, a stronghold that has them bound up where you can't talk to them. Any of you who know the story of Nabal, which his wife Abigail becomes David's wife after he died of a sudden heart attack. Here goes what happened. David had been guarding his sheep. And when David's men asked, could he just feed them some? And, and because we've guarded and protected that which was yours, he railed on David and started talking trash. And the spirit of Belial in him, are y'all hearing me? The spirit in him that was both abusive, by the way, a person that operates under a spirit of abuse will not only abuse folks in his house, it will also abuse others that he's over. Give him a job, that demon will manifest. Give him position and power, that devil will manifest. And Nabal had such a stronghold in him of Belial that it caused his whole family to be at risk. Whenever, I'm going to say it again, you see a man that no one can tell him nothing. And I've seen this in a lot of men. Their homes is on the way to hell in a handbasket. Their marriage is miserable, and their mate is just about ready to walk out of the door. And when, you, when the mate tells them, or friends tell them, man, you need 
counseling. You need ministry. And listen, don't get new with me when I use the term counseling deliverance, folk. Because counseling means wise advice from a biblical standard. That's what I mean when I say counseling. You follow me? Now, in other words, I have seen many people that this spirit of Belial, this spirit of, of, of domestic violence, and usually it operates under the cover. Hear what I'm saying? It usually operates under the cover of I am the head. I am in charge. Therefore, no one can tell me anything. Did y'all know that the covering in the Bible is a place of protection, not a place of ownership and boss? Well, I, I, in my home, Christ is the head of our home. I am the head of the house. My wife is under me, the next head. Are y'all hearing me? And we cover everything that is ours. Are you following me? And every strength that Evelyn got, amen, compensates the strength that I have. And I, as a, as a man of God, I am an umbrella of protection. I look to protect her. I look to minister to her. I look to build her in sickness and in health. Regardless of what she's going through, my place is to cover her, is to look out for her. Is to build her. Is anybody hearing this? But usually people that have a violent spirit, they get twisted in the definition of covering and it becomes control or boss. Are you hearing me? The domestic violence is based upon a misinterpretation of what God created a man or woman to be in a relationship. Are you hearing me? Nabal had such a stronghold that no one could tell him anything. I had a friend one time that one of the sayings that he would say when he would get mad was, I don't care what nobody, you can't tell me nothing. Even when his marriage was getting ready to break. And no, God didn't cause a divorce in his marriage. What caused a divorce in his marriage was the inability to hear the voice and the cry of wisdom right in his face. We don't like to say this in church, and I'm not a purporter of divorce. I'm not, because see, there's no such thing as a holy divorce. Something messed up. Are y'all understanding me? When I use the term, there's no such thing as a holy divorce, I maintain to tell you, wherever there is a divorce, there is a failure somewhere in the system. And it ain't the word of God. But this man's words were, even when his wife was trying to tell him how she could not live under the pressure and the dictatorship and the harsh words and the meanness, when she was trying to tell him, he would say, can't nobody tell me nothing. And one day I looked at him and said, you know what, I'm fully convinced. Because you sat there and watched a train wreck. You that are reading this book, reading this magazine, I want you to hear me on YouTube. You've got to have enough wisdom. You've got to have enough sense. You've got to bring down that pride that operates in your life so that somebody can say, Houston, we have a problem. Somebody needs to be able to speak in your life and say you're in trouble. But the spirit of Belial, worthlessness, dulls the ears. Got that? Right here, I'm going to pray. I deal with a prayer called breaking the generational curse because the vi domestic violence is a generational curse. It's a, and many times it transfers by learned behaviors. It can be a cultural stronghold. Listen here. Domestic violence is a generational curse that operates through the family line and seems to have the ability to transfer from one family member to the rest of the family. It seems to have the ability. Now, why does it? Now, listen. Listen to this man of God. The, the strongholds that operate in our families don't wake up one day yarning and go, oh, I think I'll just have a ball with this. The Bible says in Proverbs 26, 2, that the curse without a cause shall not come. So the spirit of domestic violence, control and manipulation has to have a gateway to get in. And most of the time that gateway is learned behaviors. So I ask people that listening at me, 
before we start talking about how you have been done, are you hearing me? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, own it. Amen. Own it if you've done it. Listen, listen. Most of us, come on now, most of us in our life, at some point, you know you missed the mark. I, 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 listen, I, I, know, I, I know that mouth of mine has said stuff and what have you there. Listen, I've said stuff to Evelyn I wouldn't say to you. And the Holy Ghost made me say, well, if you can't say it to them, why are you saying it to her? Is anybody getting this? If you listen to the Holy Spirit, are y'all hearing me? You know, I, I, the writer, my writer always likes me to take my time, and if I share a story, finish it. Let me finish the story for you. Amen. I was going to Apostle John Eckhart's, my good friend, and we were in Chicago, and Evelyn, as usual, was driving. Now, as she was driving, we couldn't find where the road to turn, and we was getting all flustrated. You know how you do? And I started, girl, turn here, turn here, and I just went off because I got to preach. So the preacher was talking harshly to his wife because he wanted to hurry up and get to minister the word. And she was holding it up because the way she was turning the wrong way. Well, I'm sitting there. Finally, we make the right turn. Evelyn pulls in the parking spot. We get ready to get out in the car, and we're feeling pretty good. Both of us feeling pretty good because sometimes, Evelyn, like, like most people that love you, they look at your ignorance and go, Lord, deliver them. Come on, baby, let's go. <laughs> I want you to hear this. Come on. Now, y'all are looking at me funny, but you know you the same way. Don't you even try that with me. I'm just the only one on this tape telling the truth and shaming the devil. So anyway, are you with me? So now, John, Apostle John, a man is getting ready to have me to preach, and they take me to the green room. They rush me in because we were running a little late. They take me into the green room. So I sat down at the table. Now I'm getting ready to get myself together because I'm going to bring the word. Praise God. They took Evelyn, and they went and sat her on the front row. Place packed out maybe 3,000 people. And the Holy Spirit said to me, if you don't apologize to you, to her, I'm not going up there with you. I said, what? <laughs> Brother Ivy, why did that happen to you? Because I believe 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Give an honor unto your wife as unto the weaker vessel, and it doesn't mean she's weak. As being heirs together, as being heirs together, look at your neighbor and say, she ain't weak, and we're heirs together. Of the grace of God. Of the grace of God of life. Read that last part. Say it with me, soldiers. That your prayers be not hindered. I knew I, had, I believe the word, and the word says that prayers can be hindered if you don't treat your wife as if she's an heir of life. You got to understand, the Lord lent me, Sister Evelyn, for a season. When we become in our new body, we ain't going to be hooked up like we are today. I'll probably say, hi, I think I've seen you before. <laughs> Hallelujah getting back getting back to this getting back to it so i believed that the way that i treated my wife i still believe that to this day i don't believe that i can treat sister evelyn any kind of way and be such a great anointed man of god and have to i get a pass and i don't have to repent because she says you know what i've been married to him he can be ignorant but i love him i don't get a pass so i walks out on the stage three thousand people all of a sudden, I said, Evelyn, darling, could you come up on the stage? Evelyn's looking at me going like, what are you doing? You got to preach. She was giving me that wave like, what are you doing? I go, give me a babe. She didn't realize how, she did not realize how intricately important she was to that sermon. Because <laughs> the ghost, the Holy Ghost wasn't going to fall upon me. I don't want to just be preaching. I want the anointing demonstrating the word with power. But I had to check myself. Now, I know some of you out there could have preached, prophesied, cast out devils, and walked on water and treated everybody like a dog. But that's not the way I roll. 
So, Evelyn comes up on the stage. I said, babe. She said, what are you doing? I said, babe. She said, what? Everybody was clapping. They were going, look how he loves her. No, I was going, look how I need her. (laughs) Folks were clapping. When Evelyn came up on the stage, she said, baby, what are you doing? I said, honey, I said, forgive me the way that I talked to you when we were trying to get. She said, honey, I forgave you. Time you said it, you were just up. I said, babe, I don't get a pass. I said, the day that I can do that and have no feeling about it, something is truly wrong with me. She said, I forgive you. Now preach. And boy, you talking about, it was on. <laughs> it was on. Hey, I got my spiritual swag on up in Ke- uh, I was in Chi-Town. I got my spiritual swag on. Hey, Amen. I was, listen, by the anointing of God, I would bust the devils off the balcony. Pow, 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 We would cast the demons out left and right. Now, what is the moral of what I told you? The moral of what I told you was, is that you got to understand what gives the spirit of violence and anger and the hardness of heart in marriage is when you do things to each other and you seem like it's no consequence. When you can do it to her, because after all, she understands. What makes you think you get a pass? Because he or she understands. Let me tell you this, my dear friend. Amen. If we would lock doors and keep the enemy out like this, amen, you will find out that he wouldn't have such footholds in our lives to destroy us. So the first prayer we're going to ask right here, right on this YouTube, right on this message is this one. Father, I ask that you loose me from spirits of abuse and domestic violence that operates in my family line, in in my life, and my family line. I repent for the hurts and wounds I have caused to others because of this learned behavior and consider it a sin as well. Did you get that? Father, loose me from the spirit of abuse and domestic violence that operates in my life and my family line. Now, you might think, well, it ain't in my life. Oh, really? I tell you what, if it ain't in your life, why is it that when you go off on that intimate mate of yours, you wouldn't do the same thing to everybody else? Listen at this. I cast out and cast down every stronghold in me and my generation that caused me to operate in the manner, in that manner, in this manner, and I command it to loose my generation in Jesus' name. And while, com- while praying, command all known manifestations you are aware of about yourself. Come, and you hear me? See, if you ever want the best deliverance you ever, ever want to get, it's not the deliverance where you sit down and see whether the prophet can read you. The best deliverance you can get is when you man up and woman up and call your own actions what they really are. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the beginning of all freedom is to stop lying to your own self. Give the Lord a great big hand praise up in here. A person that operates in the spirit of domestic violence does not necessarily have to be poor. And, or suffer from lack. Nabal was rich, but he wasted his wealth controlling his family. The spirit of domestic violence will take finances and control a person. Did you hear me? They will take the purse strings and it be a weapon. Belial is pronounced Belial meaning failure. Also meaning, listen to this, but it means also to be, a, to waste one's worth. Now, can you imagine being rich, but wasting your worth? Rich enough to have a fine wife that you could take care of, and such a fool that you don't know how to treat her once you get her. Powerful. There are ma- the, 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 the mates of domestic abusers can see such potential in their life. 
but their foolish controlling ways sabotages their value. Got that? In other words, the mate believes in you, but you crush the one person that's in your camp. Listen at this, sir, man of God. My wife, Evelyn, is, 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 she is my only cheerleader. Are you hearing me? My God, I mean, when did she, that woman has had my back for 36 years. Are you hearing me, what I'm saying? Why would I abuse the one that's in my corner? But if you don't watch a generational spirit and behavior that you've learned, you will do it and never realize that you're doing it because it becomes such a part of your nature that you don't even know you're doing it. Their mate, the, the mates of domestic abusers can see such a potential in them, but their foolish controlling ways sabotages their value. The hope and uh, of abuse victim is that they will change. But what makes, listen at that, but what makes it difficult for their change is nobody can tell them anything. That's all any bondage needs to destroy a person. All any bondage needs to destroy a person is for you not to have anyone that can speak in your life. Listen, Nabal had a full staff, and the full staff knew. You know how he is. Listen at this. Now, listen. To most people, uh, Abigail was a Jezebel. Look at Jezebel. She was no Jezebel. That fool get ready to cause that body to get killed. <laughs> David was getting ready to come up in there and kill everything he had. And Abigail went out there and said, please, 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 please don't, don't, don't do that. And David looked at her and said, you know what? Had she not been in his house. Uh, can I say something to you and tell you all the truth? Amen. There are many judgments that have been held back. That, and the only reason why they were held back is because the person you're abusing was, had such grace with God that God had mercy. But don't keep playing with God. When she, they, listen, the servant went to Abigail. Notice the servant went. Uh oh, oh yes, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Listen at this. Sometimes the only reason why folks go to the other person is because everybody knows that if they come to you, you're going to go off on them. You're going to manifest. Neighbor knows it. Dogs even know it. Just look at you going, nope, nope. Dog go, whoop, nope. nope. I ain't fooling with them. I'm not doing. Are you understanding? This is the power. When it when it calls that word such uh, the word uh, Nabal also means a fool. That's he didn't even realize it. Oh, he was he had the, he was an expensive, well dressed, nice housed fool. Now that is tough, ain't it? To have things but no discernment. And his servants had to go to his wife because they couldn't talk to him. Isn't that bad? I told you this is a bad message. This is an awesome message. Listen to this. Domestic violence is the misuse of power and control over a household member uh, or intimate partner. It operates through intimidation, Manipulation, and oh, by the way, I speak in the realm of marriage, folks. I speak, when I say intimate partner, you're dating someone, thinking of marriage. You know you got to put that nowadays in books. <laughs> you know you do. Look, I'm a Holy Ghost preacher. If you expect it any other way, you got the wrong DVD. <laughs> Amen. I'm talking about you, you're planning to get married. This is not just another one of your women or another one of your men. Can we move on past that? I think we're clear. I know we are. Domestic violence is the misuse of power and control over a household member. Or, 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 and it operates through intimidation, manipulation, and control through the emotions. Listen at this. It operates and controls through the emotions. Verbal abuse. Physical abuse sexual abuse, financial abuse, religious abuse, and many others. That's how this thing operates. Domestic violence is more about 
power and control than about gender. Got that? There are many times in the Bible Belial is used and mentioned, but in this study, we are focusing on the manifestation of its destruction of the family. I often get, listen to me, I often get people coming, setting with me for deliverance for their family, and I run up against the same spirit of Belial. Sisters, I dealt with a Latino sister who said, this was years ago out of Long Island, and that girlfriend told me, she said, I need to be delivered. I got a spirit in me that I will antagonize this man. I will push him. I will stay on him until I can break him, and then I keep it, and then we get fighting, fussing, cussing. Then we had the best sex you ever want to have. Never realizing that, sweetheart, fussing, cussing, and fighting is not an aphrodisiac. <laughs> and can I hear a amen? But that was a twisted, warped thing that the demons have built in her. She was actually the abuser. And, and she would sit there and say, she said, I fight him and he won't fight back. And I do this and I do it. And what I've been, when we went to praying for her, Honey, that thing come up. Oh, it was some, oh, it was a vicious little devil. Cast him right out. We did it in Jesus' name. Yes, we did. I don't care how cute she is. That demon in you is ugly. You can't wear enough makeup and put on enough rouge to hide that demon. Give God a great big hand praise. What I speak in reference of, you can't beautify ugliness. The, ugly, the beauty comes from what's in your spirit. And if a spirit is what's there. Is anybody hearing this word? Hallelujah. While ministering deliverance to a family, the young teenage manifestation of the spirit of domestic violence that came from watching his father disrespect and verbally abuse his mother. I was ministering to a young teenager, and the spirit of domestic violence came up in the boy, and he had learned it transferred from watching his father domestically abuse his mother. Often this spirit will enter a man as a child living in a home where the father is fussing, cussing, and physically abusing the mother. This young man will talk back to his mother in such an abusive manner that it will keep the mother constantly dealing with the demonic breakdown of her emotions, giving her no peace. Got that? And what's amazing about these type of spirits emotionally and physically abusing the mother is that she's being destroyed by the two most important males in her life, her son and her husband. And he never rebuked that boy. Let me say something to you. The day a son of mine treats my wife, look, I will look at my son and tell him she might be your mother. But that's my wife. And I wouldn't tolerate it from any other man. And I sure enough ain't going to tolerate it from a son. Give the Lord a great big hand praise if you can. I was counseling a professional. And I was breaking spirits of domestic violence that he'd done to her. He never punched her. He never hit her. But he was would mess around with women right in that girl's face. Had a woman with a house down the road. The wife knew it was down the road. Had a matching babies. Mean girlfriend pregnant, wife pregnant. Two for one deal. Are oh, you hearing me? And when I was sitting there commanding that demon to come out of her and healing, God was healing the deep wounds and hurts, he looked at me. This guy was a champion. And he turned around and he looked at me, and I said to him, I said, turn around. I said, and you pray for her. And I said to him, I said, you know what? I said, if another man had wounded her like you had, you would have knocked him out. And he looked at me and held his head down and shook his head. I said, look at her. You did that. This man could have crushed me with one fist. He could have killed me with a blow. But he sat there. And he saw the damage. I'm going to speak to all of you out there who the spirit of domestic violence, y'all are fussing, fighting, and cussing. I know you clean it up for church folk. 
You can have a real fight and get on the phone. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. I want to say something to you. Stop justifying that. Stop justifying it. Call it what it is. Lord, I need deliverance in my mouth. Lord, I need to be healed because I'm being mean to this person. Jesus. Hallelujah. When you find these type of manifestations strong in a family, the mother may have been reared in a home where the father was abusive to her mother. And demons love to keep cycles continuing. They love it. While we're sitting here tonight and we're beginning to break this thing, we want to break the cycle that y'all have learned. Now, now here goes some of the stuff you said when the cycle's been in your family line. I tell you what, if I ever get a man here, you, mom might have put up with that with my dad. Try, try it on me. And you can go one or two ways. <laughs> you can go one or two ways. <laughs> hey, man, you get right, real, right back, you said, pull that hand, I'll take this butcher knife, and I'll leave it in the pot. In other words, I'll cut that hand off you and try to hit me. Or you can become a doormat and take it. Spirits, I'm going to say it again. Demons, uh, listen, demon strength, demon strength are taken when we take responsibility for the doors we give to them. Sitting here right now in this building, if you've been a domestic violence, whether it's verbal, physical, if you have operated like that, Take responsibility, Christian. Take responsibility. Sister, Sister Brittany Hand, Minister Brittany Hand, I have sat down and counseled with couples and saw some of the things they've done to each other. And I went home to Evelyn and sat down, brother, and I said to her, baby, sit down. She said, what? She'd be looking at me and like, what? What's wrong with you? I said, honey, I love you. She said, what's up? She said, what's wrong with you? I said, F, F, I love you, baby. Oh, Lord have mercy, I love you. Because I just spent an hour and a half with these demons and these people. I love you, girl. <laughs> you, know, you need to wise up and say, if you see a shipwreck going somewhere and your ship is heading in the same wreck, get out of the way. Turn around. Danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> now, what's operating also in the spirit of domestic violence is a spirit called misogyny. It's the hatred of women. This demon is always behind the abuse to women. It causes her family members to abuse her with a determination to destroy her. Uh, and, uh, and, and, she, and, if she, and if she fights back, it, the offspring spirits will then be turned to Jezebel and have her fighting when nobody's after her. Oh, God. Because she's always been put in a place where she's had to fight. Hatred of men begins to operate. Y'all hear me? Let me go there. And you can get so sick of it until after a while you start choosing a woman over a man. And the next thing you know, you're in a lesbian relationship. Because the abuser. Hey, don't go perverse. Get delivered. And I'm not going to back up and call homosexuality, and lesbianism of God, because it's not. Now, I'm going to move on past that, and you can call me a hater, whatever you want. Send me an email, ivoryhopkins at comcast.net, okay? Thank you, because I'm not going to back off from the truth. But folk need to call things what they are and get delivered. But this spirit, domestic violence and abuse, has driven folks into changing their entire lives for the worse. Don't make one bad decision. Don't make one bondage and switch it off for another. And it could cause, here goes some of the things it can cause. It could cause strong unforgiveness, bitterness, even turning sexually and emotionally to the opposite sex. If the woman does not fight back in the spirit, these demons will slowly fragment her mind. What I mean by fighting back in the spirit and what have you. And that was resistant. And by the way, let me help some of you young folk. Amen. If you are in a relationship with a boyfriend that acts like that, a girlfriend that acts like that, guess what? You're better to hurt leaving than to hurt worse staying. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, only God could create people in his own image. So if you meet somebody that you got to recreate to be with, Stop it. 
if the woman does not fight back in the spirit, these demons will, dis- will slowly fragment her mind and emotion so she will not be a whole person, just a shell of what she used to be. That's what the domestic violence would do. It beats it down. If it's your daughter, you look at her and go, baby, what is wrong, honey? And they're almost like their mind, I'm okay. Say, Listen, honey, I know you're trying to apply the makeup thick, but you got a black eye. Listen, you can't trip down the steps for so many times when you only have three flights of stairs. Young teenage girl, young teenage lady, amen. Oh, he said, well, he only slapped me twice. Got no business slapping you once. Is anybody getting this? Most of the time, domestic violence is given a pass. And you give in a pass. Listen, never give a pass to anyone to abuse you. Or else you will lose part of yourself. This is done by the spirit of control and manipulation. Verbal abuse, mental abuse, and a host of manifestations that dehumanizes the person with such control and foolishness. Listen to this. One husband came from work as he sat down for dinner. Now, now this actually happened. His wife was bringing bread to the table, and a roll fell from the plate to the floor. He slapped the rest of the plate into the floor and made her get down on the floor and eat it like a dog while calling her all kinds of bees. And she felt that was a good day because at least he didn't hit her. Did you hear this? Said, you know, it wasn't so bad. He didn't hit me this time. He just called me all kinds of B's and W's. In other words, you're counting your blessing by how less derogatory this demon was. I'm talking about the spirit of domestic violence. Listen to this. First Samuel 25, 17. Going first Samuel twenty five seventeen. Now therefore know and consider what will he will do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. And in the young, he operates in the, in a thing called the naughty boy. As some girls say, they want a bad boy. They want a naughty boy, a bad boy. Somebody that talks to you, listen, you need deliverance. If, if someone who treats you human isn't enough for you, doesn't turn me on. I want a bad boy. Somebody go upside my head. Why? It's not, listen, I don't mean any offense, but it's not normal. Almost with a pugilistic mindset. Are you hearing me? Not knowing they want someone Operating under the spirit of Balaam, they are always in trouble with the law. That's what they want, bad boy. Because it's a lawless spirit. The spirits of worthlessness and destruction and wickedness operates in this nature. Belial. Minister Jairus was just talking about the spirit of Belial as a strong man. It's related to destruction and incarceration. Well, this spirit here attracts you to that. Wanting that type of thing. Somebody that don't knock you upside the head. Well, I, I just don't feel the same. Y'all are laughing, but I'm telling you the truth, man. This is a sign of an individual that needs healing, that needs deliverance. The spirit causes a person to be bound until they can't. Okay, let me move past that. Um, let me go on. Let me see. I'm going to go ahead. Okay, uh, I got with that. I want to go to, let's go to page, go to page. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let's go over to page seven. Page seven. Let's describe what domestic violence is. Amen. To the person dealing with me on, on this YouTube and what have you, I'm doing this because we've, we're in this conference, we have notes that are in people's hands and they can get with us. Amen. If you don't, some of you, if you don't have the notes, if they have extra ones back there, let them have it, man. Raise your hand if you don't have the notes. If they got extra, they'll give it to you. Amen. Listen at this. What is domestic violence? Domestic violence is a pattern of behavior used to establish power and control over another person through fear and intimidation, 
often including the threat or the use of violence. So when you're ministering to someone operating under that stronghold, you're going to find spirits of fear, intimidation, and violence. Got that? Also, you will find, watch this, watch this. You Also, you will find in them a stronghold that causes them to see no problem with it. I, you hear me? Yeah, you will sit and look at them and go, why are you taking that? And they're in such a, let me tell you why. You can beat, if a person allows himself to be beat down so long, after a while, they will look for reasons that they deserve it. Are you hearing me? If I hadn't fried that pork chop too, on the wrong side, he wouldn't have broke my jaw. Then, and then watch this. Then we go, you know, girl, I'll tell you the truth. I don't, I don't mean to be hurting you, but, but you just keep doing that kind of stuff. I keep telling you that I don't like my taters that way. What? You just throwed hot potatoes in my face and, and now you're apologizing? By the way, they have with them a repeated apology but no brokenness. Some stuff you have to know that you need to flee away from it. What are the effects of domestic violence on children? Children who live in a home where there is domestic violence also suffer abuse and neglect at a high rate, 30 to 60 percent. Children exposed to domestic violence at a home are more likely to have health problems, including becoming sick more often, having frequent headaches, stomach aches, and being more tired and lethargic. They don't rest well. They're, they live in fear. Grandma, if this is your grandchild, it's affecting them. Stand in the gap. Pray. This, these teachings that we're teaching is to equip saints to minister to people like this. Are you understanding me? Now, if I seem like I'm real strong about what I'm saying, let me share another testimony. that ain't pretty, but I'm going to share it. My my second worst experience with domestic violence, we had an evangelist from North Carolina that was preaching a weekend at our church. And uh, her husband kept calling and calling and calling, so much so that I said to him, now, he knew she was coming in to preach. He said she could come to minister. Are you hearing me? But I had noticed a strange thing. And I'm talking about the religious hidden spirit of domestic violence. I had noticed as they they were under our fellowship and I noticed a strange thing about him. I noticed when she would preach and I would watch him, instead of him rejoicing at the grace of God in her life, you could see a displeasure. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't straight open. But you could look at him and tell like, and, and you know how you look at something sometimes in a person, you go, no, 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 no. I didn't see what I saw. Ever been there? You saw something, but you don't know whether you really saw what you seen. So anyway, I noticed, I said, this boy has got a strong, jealous spirit of her. And it may, and, 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 and I didn't know the, the depth of what it was. So getting back to her. So that weekend, she, I'll never forget this. Me and Evelyn, in our bedroom, we had a jacuzzi that you walked up on three flights so you could sat on it, on, on it and talk. And she was down the bedroom with me and Evelyn, and we, were just, and we just sat down on the edge of, this, uh, edge of it, and we were chatting, and we were all just chewing the fat, just talking a little bit. And she turned around and said, and I'm not going to say the guy's name on this tape, but she said, he going to kill me. And the way she said it, I said, what? She said, he going to kill me. I said, Why? She said, he just get mad, and right now he's mad. I said, well, what is he mad about? She said, he told me I could come, and, and, and he said, but he talks one way in front of y'all, but he, it's, you just don't know. I looked at her, listen at this, listen at me. I said, when she said he's going to kill me, it was so real, it scared me. I said, I said, Evangelist, I'm trying not to say her name. 
if you're that afraid that he's going to do something when you go home, I said, why don't you let us try to help you get to a place so that you don't have to go back in there. She said, Bishop, my children are there, and I got to go home to them. She said, I got to go home to my children. A week goes by. Sunday morning, I'm getting ready for church. The week later, the church. My phone rings early in the morning. I said, is this Bishop Hopkins? I, it was a child's voice, maybe eight or nine years old. I said, yes, it is. He said, I called to tell you because I think you would need to know. Last night, my daddy killed my mama. He said he stabbed her to death and tried to drink brake fluid and kill himself. I just, I was like blown completely away. We went to the funeral. We went to the funeral. And, 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 and when you looked in the coffin, the undertaker had done the best job he could. But you could see her hands were stab marks where she was trying to guard herself. I learned from that day that as long as I breathe, I will never, ever listen at a person telling me that they're under that kind of threat without begging them to not go back in it. Now, you may say you're breaking up a happy home, honey. You may say you're fostering divorce, apostle. Say what you will, but if it'll save another life, it would be worth leaving. I wished she had left him than to go there and die one week later. Now, on this, we can't clap or anything. I'm trying to tell you the power of domestic violence. There is a place. There's a place when one wants deliverance, when one wants to change, there's a place to get your deliverance. And there's also a place of leaving. And most preachers won't say that because we're supposed to say stay at all costs. I don't believe that. I believe that when a thing is going so far and so crazy, you need to position yourself where you can pray and intercede and not be dead because you stayed and didn't. Let me move on. Hallelujah. What are the effects of domestic violence on the mental health? Domestic violent victims face high rates of depression, sleep disturbance, anxiety, flashbacks, and even emotional distress. Now, what does this all have to do with demons? Because they close in. They close in to pressure. They close in to kill. The enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy now, in our position, right now standing in our position, we are in a position ministering to you to say, listen, if you have been damaged by this, we want to pray that God heals you from those wounds. We want to pray that God breaks it. If you are operating under this, we want to pray that you get free. Listen, one thing I found to be true in every service, there is the victim and the victimizer. You're one or the other. Now, there's a few folks, I ain't, I ain't never had that happen, Brother Hopkins, and I say, praise God, amen, give me your prayer support while we pray for the other two. Because you're either or, amen, and if you have one that have escaped abusers, amen, it will have an effect on your life. And first of all, that an abusing spirit, if you've escaped it, it leaves you with a fear of trusting. You want, you, on the one hand, you want to meet somebody real. You want to have a real life, a real marriage. But that the, the other thing has left such a bad taste in your mouth until it's hard for you to even discern who to trust. Is anybody understanding what I'm saying? Hallelujah. This is a warfare prayer that I asked a man, a good friend of mine, to, to write for us. And I'm going to go over it for this tape, for this tape here. And, and, and what it is, it is a prayer of overcoming the spirit of abuse. It's on eight on your sheet, if you can. The prayer of overcoming abuse. I decree in the name of Jesus. Y'all listen at me on this YouTube. 
I decree in the name of Jesus that the cycle of mental, physical, and psychological abuse is broken off of me and my family. That's blessed base number one. I decree it's broken off of me and my family. I bind and curse the spirit of violence of my life and the life of my seed. And you will never return to my seed again. Got that? I break that off of my seed. We'll get ready to pray after this. Father, God, in the name of Jesus, open the eyes of those that suffer from hidden abuse. Hidden abuse. Now, what is hidden abuse? Glad you asked. It's where folk do little stuff and make you feel insane. That's another one. Now, there is, the, there is, a, there is an abuse spirit that's treacherous. Listen to me, brother. This demon causes the person to do things to their mate and then act as if they did nothing. And the mate's losing their mind. Say, I don't know. It never happened. And you're going like, yes, it did. I know it happened. It never happened. And the person's mind is going through changes. I never forget a friend of mine in Washington, D.C., woman of God. She married an abuser. This guy called her so many dumb bees until when she would come home around him. Now, she was, listen, she had all kinds of degrees in college. She worked for the government, a high-paying class job. When she would get home, her, she would just shatter right in front of him. And he said, look at you, you dumb bee. I told you you ain't got no good sense. Look how dumb you are. You don't know why you're not. And she would just go all to pieces. But on her job, they depended on her. She was, the girl was, was, was strong. When you're being domestically beat down, that's why tonight when I come against those spirits, when we begin to break their power, I want to break that thing that has messed with your mind. Because abuse, the spirits of abuse begins to destroy the mind. So what happened with her? He called her so many dumb bees, so many dumb names like that, that when she would come home to him, she would just start simple stuff. She would mess up. And then he'd look at her and say, look at you. Told you you were stupid. And then again, like I was saying earlier, that, that, that hidden one, it does stuff. Sandra, it does stuff. And makes you think you're losing your mind. They move stuff. Do stuff. So where I thought I just did that. No, you ain't do it. Yeah, you would, you would, you would make you wonder that someone would treat somebody that way, wouldn't it? But there are people who do that. Because they're dismantling the person. They want them with lack of conflict. They want them with lack of confidence. They want them with lack of self-esteem so that they control them. By the way, man of God, listen to this one. Abusers love to isolate the one they got from families. What do I mean? Your daughter can't come and see y'all now. Used to come and, come and visit, can't now. The family used to come by, not now. You're talking too much to your mother. Y'all need to quit talking so much. Got that? Whenever they, now, now the abuser can see whoever they want to. They can talk to whoever they want to. But when they're the one they're trying to control, you know why they want to keep them hidden like that? Because they know you know what they look like before they got a hold of them. <laughs> They know that you recognize that they have dismantled them. Domestic violence fragments the soul. Got that? Are you learning anything with this? I decree that all traces of abuse is removed from my heart, mind, and spirit, and I am healed by the blood of Jesus. Next, I bind and curse the spirit of manipulation and torture. You can no longer hold me hostage. I'm free. And notice what it says here. Manipulation and torture. I bind and curse all spirits of withdrawal, isolation, seclusion in Jesus' name. I am free to go as I please. Jesus has set me free. Do you see it? Withdrawal, isolation. And seclusion. Now you're ministering to this person. And as you're praying for him. Amen. Listen. Minister Jairus talked about the cage made of bars. This here is a cage made of the emotions disrupted. A cage that dismantled the soul. Fragmented the soul. And now the person is in just as much prison as the jailhouse bar. 
And the, and, the, and the sad problem is the prison is their partner and the jailhouse is their home. Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? I decree, listen to this, I decree I will no longer hide my abuse from the ones that love me and care about me. Father, give me the courage to come forth and leave my abusive situation in Jesus' name. And notice what this, what this prayer says. I will no longer hide my abuse. Baby, is everything all right? Yeah, mama, I, I'm just fine. She said, well, honey, how come you can't go nowhere now? Well, well Peter won't let me. Here goes how it sounds. I, I could not imagine, Evelyn said, I got to ask him, can I go? Now, listen. Me and Evelyn, when we're going places and doing things, yes, we tell each other. What's, come on now. Yes, I don't just up and disappear. She doesn't just up and disappear. But that's a mutual agreement. And it's not a control. Oh, Evelyn's controlling me because she wants to know where I went. No, that's not control. That's concern. And also it's called a good dose of respect. Are you hearing me? It's called respect. Is anybody getting this? But this thing ain't talking about respect. Let's talk about manipulation and control. I got this. I will no longer hide my abuse from the ones that love me and care about me. Father, give me the courage to, uh, to come forth and leave my abusive situation in Jesus' name. Listen to this next part. I will not be controlled by the demon, by the demon of possession and all controlled spirits who the Son has set free is free indeed. Now, let me tell you about the demon of possessions. Pick up the other camera, Eddie. Should be able to hold it. Amen. Okay, cool, cool. Roll it, baby. Roll it. Let me tell you about the demon of possessions. Manipulation and control also makes you stay put because of provision. It says, if you leave, where you're going. Got that? So, therefore, it traps you in a place where you have to stay scared, fearful, and afraid because you got nowhere else to go. Look how wicked. Isn't that wicked? My God. Father, I ask you to have mercy on my abuser. I ask that. You know, the reason why she's praying this prayer here, have mercy on my abuser, because if you don't ask God to help you, you will hate him. And honey, that hate can be so strong that it will hinder you from getting your freedom. Are you hearing me? Now, we're not saying, amen, oh, praise God for my abuser. No, indeed. Lord, help me not to hate them, but give me a way of escape as fast as possible. I say it like this sometimes. I've seen some people when they left, they out there drop confetti and had a parade. Thank you, Jesus. They got away. Father, I ask you to have mercy on my abuser. I ask that you allow your glory to come upon them and save them and bring healing to their wounded, hurting heart. Because people who hurt people are hurt people. People who abuse people have already gone through it themselves. Amen. Let me, let me go ahead and finish this thing. I decree that deliverance is my portion and I am not the, I, 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 and I am not the negative words that my abuser spoke to me. I command condemnation to all ne- I command condemnation to all negative words spoken against me. These words are void of life and have no meaning in Jesus name. What we call that we just break all evil decrees spoken against us. In other words in Jesus name all that stuff listen said that you hammered at me in Jesus name that's not who I am. I rebuke and bind all spirits that want me to have a low self-esteem and, and I am what God says I am and I'm an overcomer. I curse all spirits of hurt, depression, anger, bitterness, betrayal, loneliness, wounded heart, jealousy, confusion, and being misled. Uh, misled. I command you to leave now and never return in the name of Jesus. It's a bad prayer, man. I break the demonic curse of all unrealistic expectations put on me by the abuser. I break the demonic curse of all unrealistic. Are y'all hearing me? All unrealistic expectations put on me. I break that now. 
Father, I ask that you heal my child from all spirits of harassment, torment, ridicule, and heal their minds with the blood of Jesus. I decree that my child will not have any memory recall of the abuse that the child has seen in Jesus' name. I decree that me and my children are delivered from the spirit of denial and all mind games. Yeah, I'm getting ready to close out when I finish this here. Amen. And this is, this is awesome. I got to do all this. This is just, this is just. I command Satan to bring back everything he used, my abuser, to steal from my life and my seed. I command you in, to bring it back immediately 100 fold. Hallelujah. I decree that I will no longer suffer from wounded emotions or emotional abuse. I command all spirits that are assigned to torment my mind to come out in Jesus' name. Now, y'all are hearing me do this, but we're going to do the mass deliverance with this bad boy. God, I ask you to heal every part of my, of, of my physical body that was harmed from abuse. Mend and repair me with the blood of Jesus Christ. Search my abuser's heart, and remove all hurts and malice. Save his or her soul. I decree that my emotions are free from the spirit of rape, incest. By the way, it's another thing the abuser does. Amen. When a person, amen, beats you down and manipulates you like that and have sex with you, it ain't sex, it's rape, man. I decree that my emotions are free from the spirits of rape, incest, violent sexual attacks, purge and, and purify me as only you can, Jesus. And I'm going to say something to you, folks, without saying a graphic word. We, we have set and delivered people that I've seen folks do stuff to people that I will go like, what? That, that means sodomize them. All in the name of, uh, 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 of you're my wife and you have to do what I say. It's craziness. But these are demons, and they're doing it to break you. I break every demonic soul tie that attaches me, me to, uh, attached to me from the spirit of abuse. I command all fragmented pieces of my soul to be restored and healed in Jesus' name. I bind and break the curse of intimidation off my life in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that my seed will not grow up and have any hatred in their heart that will drive them to ungodly relationships in Jesus' name. I decree that my children will not grow up and become gay or have sexual addictions due to to the abuse in Jesus name. I counsel the assignment of all generational bondages in my bloodline attached to abuse. I decree and declare that from this day forward, all males and females will respect me and everything I stand for in Jesus' name. Father, I ask that you open doors and provide resources, shelters, home, and for the abusers, for the abused to go. God said I, I shall live and not die. I break the curse a feeling unwanted, not love, abandoning in Jesus' name. I decree that abuse was not my fault. I decree that my seed will not be attacked with nightmares. No evil shall touch us at the night in Jesus' name. And Father, I ask you, get ready, Ed. I ask you that you teach me and my seed to trust again, to love again, and show us what true love is. And I will not reason in my mind and make up excuses for my abuser's abuse. I decree that I will not carry any wounds from past relationships into godly men and women that will bring into my, that you bring into my life. I savor emotional ties and controls, lies from off my, off, off my spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. And about this point, I'm going to come off of this tape, and then we're going to go right into praying and ask the God to break that thing. Now, if you want to see the Holy Spirit break that in your life, we get ready to go for it now. Ed, you can take the camera off. <laughs>